I have some kind of acting thing image because I want to do hardcore image for the media and then I'm soft on the, on the inside. But I'm not afraid to say what I think. I'm not afraid to, to, to do what I believe in. Then afterwards, well, afterwards they, they give you shit or nothing. I mean, it's me. I cannot change me. I'm not here to, to be beautiful or, uh, or to be perfect to somebody. I think being yourself is perfect. Yeah. You will do mistakes, you will learn from your mistakes. And you will still do mistakes. So I think it's important being yourself. I came to America, I saw act, no actors. I saw say, big shots make, trying to make the perfect image. And I go to one of the show and they're like, where's your crew or, or entourage? And I'm like, what about my entourage? No, but normally like famous people, they come with 20 people. I say, you're here for me or my entourage? For you, I'm here. So I don't need them to make my image. I'm here for myself. So that's why I say, I always say, be yourself. Being perfect is being yourself. And I Authenticity think- Authenticity has a power to it, I think. I think so, yes. And uh, me getting angry and that, that's me. I need, I need to get fired up. So that's how I bring out sharpness. That's how I bring out the best out of me when I walk on fire. Because if you make me feel too comfortable, I'm playing to win. And to win, I will destroy you. I will do everything to win. And I need to win. Because when I win is my, is my proof that I am, I am alive. And that's wherever I came, I was like that. But then I had some, I had situation where I have teammates, they would crack and crack. They would not make it. They would cry in front of me, but I don't care because I'm here to win because I played in top five clubs in the world. I played maybe three of them. And if I don't do my job, they bring in somebody else and I'm not there anymore. So that's why I say it's about survival mode. I'm not here to be nice or to be bad. I'm here to win. So to win, I needed to, to get those trigger Get, find those trigger points to get the best out of me. I think to understand why you're like this, I want to take you back to, to Malmo, uh, to Rosengard, where you grew up. You've described it as being like a ghetto. It was a rough, tough place. You said you can take a guy away from Rosengard, but you can't take Rosengard out of a guy. Yeah. What do you mean by that? I mean, I can go, I can come, I can make it out of the ghetto, but the ghetto will stay in me. So I came from Rosengard because I am still who I am even if I'm not there. And that's what I say. You, you can take yourself out of a place, but the, the place you were raised and, and, and born in, it will still be, still be in you. So that I would never change for success. I would never change for whatever happens to me. I will still be the same guy because the real, the, the real thing will stay and survive longer. Not because I come in a nice area now, I bought a nice house in a nice area, I become them. No, no, I'm still myself. Mm. But my proof to them is I can, I can also live here, even if I'm from that area. And I think it's important because you need to represent where you come from. But obviously, then you need discipline, you need respect, you need education. You cannot be an animal in your own, uh, where you come from and then animal there. You need to, you need to keep the discipline and the respect, which... You said that where I come from, people were always judging me and telling me, no, that's not possible. I want to show kids growing up like I did that anything is possible. I'm the living proof you can succeed. Do you think you've had that impact on young people who are in your position? 100%, because where I came from with my background, if you look of the, the history, like the, in my game, my football game, there were not a lot of players with different background that would make it or that would get the possibility or the chance to just to show themselves. And, and I'm happy that I, I went through all these walls just to open the door for the next generation. So I opened the door, they have to step in. So I cannot talk for them. I cannot, uh, uh, prepare, I mean, do the things for them. I just opened the doors and I had to go through a lot of to come where I am and to show everybody that it's possible mm -hmm. and make them accept also that it's okay, whoever you are, to give you a chance. Then I talk Sweden because that is my base. 
then obviously you become a global person and and it spreads out because for me we're all the same but still different so all of us has the same possibilities to make it but then it's up to you also whatever you want to do tell me about your parents um, your father first of all Sefik he was a caretaker yeah. um, I was interested that he he suffered quite a lot of torment as a result of the war in Yugoslavia um, it affected him quite deeply I think yeah. have you ever had a chance to really talk about that with him no because he never spoke about it with me I, I had to so I was living with my father we are like five children my, my, my brother passed away my big brother a couple mm. of years ago I have two bigger sisters that I don't have contact with uh, I have another bigger sister than me that we have the same parents it's a big mix huh? yeah <laughs> and uh, we still have contact contact and my little brother we we still have contact today but I was living alone with my with my father and in the beginning it was okay because I mean the father he did every my father did everything to to survive to mm. to bring in money to to pay the bill to pay the rent to make me feel happy he did his maximum and the best out of the conditions that was there and then the war started started then he was more distance from me because he kept everything away from me and uh, and he took it very hard because I remember like it's no secret that my father was he drank and uh, he was sitting there with uh, his phone tried to reach out for the family members I don't know what was going on because I was pretty small at that time and but but I could see mm. and often what you see stays longer than what you hear. So, but we never discuss about it. He never put me in between. He tried to help family members. So fugitives came to Sweden, family members, and he helped them and he put his name on it. And, uh, and I remember he was up during the night and that always with uh, on the phone and uh, tried to help out, but I was, I was young and I was crazy, I was wild. I was out, I was playing football a lot. I still had the discipline to go to school because if I would not go to school, my, my father would smash me, which is, which is normal in our world, so. How would he do that? No, he would, he would become aggressive. He would, he would make sure I do it. He would not hit me, my mother would hit me. She really? was the one hitting, not my father. My I read friend. that your mother used a wooden spoon. Wooden spoon and hit me. So when that would break, she would say to me, go buy a new one. But I didn't break it, you broke it. <laughs> but it was still my fault. How many spoons did you have to buy? A so? lot, a lot, a lot. <laughs> then it came to a certain moment, like, how do you call the thing you put when you press the bread, like the round? When she came with that, like I ran away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I ran away. I said, this is too hard. This mm. you cannot touch me with. But for what, us, what, was what, normal. For us, was normal. I understand, but it, there'll be people watching this who have not experienced that yeah. from their parents. D do you feel that you carried mental scars from the from no. being hit no. or not? It made me stronger. It made me stronger because now when I'm a parent myself, I understood what my parents went through, mm. and uh, and it's not easy. I mean, we live now in 2023, different conditions. I live different, I can come with a suit, whatever, mm -hmm. for these kind of a moments. They couldn't, they couldn't do those things. Mm -hmm. My mother had five children. She was a cleaner, your mother. She was a cleaner. She brought home probably, I don't know, in pound, like let's say a thousand euro and to feed all these five children. And, uh, and she was working from, from seven to four. So we went to school. I have older sisters. I had older brother. But my big brother was from my father's side, so he was not involved in my mother's case. And she had to feed everybody, and it was not easy. And we were all young, crazy, and wild, so it was not easy. So that was her way to, to put the discipline on us. But if I would go back and say it's not okay, no. I would say it was okay, because it made me who I am today. And I understand in many eyes it's not okay. But on, under that conditions, different mentality, different approach. They're from Balkan, ex-Yugoslavia, and, uh, and it's different mentality. And it's normal there. Mm. In some countries, it's not normal. It's, I mean, you can even, 
Sue or whatever you say. What's your those. relationship like with your parents today? I'm closer with my mother, with my father. It's, it's, it has been like it was before. Not so close as my mother, because it's two big egos. To I am my father, so when he fights me, he fights himself, yeah. which he doesn't understand, because I am like him. He made me who I am. So let's say he, he would come in my garage, and I have a, it's not secret, I have a lot of nice cars. And he said, 